Hello everyone and welcome back to season two of Building the AK Cobra. That's right, we've only just got rid of the season three car to the body shop, the one that I planned to paint blue, and we got the season two car back from the body shop and the trimmers. Let's take a look around. So here we are, um, nice, uh, really sharp looking. It's uh, painted in some sort of Ferrari silver with Wimbledon white stripes, which are really nice touch actually, instead of bright white, so they're not glaring in the sunshine, etc. Just blends in really nicely with the silver and the silver wheels. So that's all fantastic. Um, so what, what are my first thoughts? Well, great job, pinstripes, awesome, everything centered. You know, these things have to be done aesthetically and not by a ruler, and, uh, and they've done a great job here. Um, so um, what's going on here? Well, there's a few things. So unfortunately, um, they filled my holes that I drilled for the escutcheons, which is a bit of a bind because we need to take the windscreen off Put the discussions on, put the windscreen back on, mark where they go, windscreen back out, drill holes, fit discussions, windscreen back in, which is about 20 times more often than I want to take the windscreen in and out, uh, especially with the, all the fresh paint. So I'll be definitely getting the hand with that. Uh, it's definitely a two man job. I'm not risking anything with the uh, legs of the windscreen. Also, we have to be careful with these uh, M4 bolts that we uh, center those as the windscreen drops in because uh, you don't put them in afterwards they're kind of uh, uh, locked in there now and you then do them up with a I've got a cut off bit of allen key gonna mask all this area because no matter what you think you go around on here with the palm of your hand you will be making some scuffs so got to mark all that up so that's a that's the only real bind of course we've got to fit everything on uh, roll bars and all that now I did try and drive the car off the transporter Unfortunately, I then found uh, there was no battery, so the trimmers have apologised for that. It was intertrim, by the way, but no drama. It's going to get the battery back. It's all good. They've done a fantastic job. All the line in here, um, the diamonds on the centre tunnel, fantastic. Nicely lined up and even on each side, which is a real must for me. Uh, nice embroidery in the seats. Got some car mats in there with uh, some embroidery on, and uh, nice leather going up the sides, which is terrific and really nice touch. I was actually wondering if I did this before I sent it off, but uh, nice finish to the rubber here, which is always nice to see, instead of leaving it all bare with those jagged bits of metal hanging out. So all in all, um, you know, it looks amazing. Got a lot of work to do to put all the uh, shiny stuff back on. Um, we've got to be careful for IVA, because that's in just a couple of weeks. So, with the soft top, you get these studs fitted. Now, that will fail IVA because of the sharpness and the radius of it. So, we've got to put little rubber um, end caps on there, like stud threaded bar uh, rubber end caps. Um, and also, this massive protrusion here we need to look at. Uh, these should be okay, well within the radius. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of an unknown, but I've been told that will be fine. Um, now, we've got uh, some seats um, for the uh, built-in headdress and to get the harness um, uh, high enough coming back down over your shoulders. So they will be fitted um, much safer and I would recommend um, a headrest uh, or something like that. Uh, so this is, this is all great. This is nice and even through my lights at the back. Um, obviously we are not putting on uh, any bumpers or anything, although I think we have IVA okay bumpers, but you know, um, because they've got solid filled in um, uprights, but uh, we're just gonna be putting in some nice, uh, some nice rubber um, blind grommets in there. Um, apart from that, yeah, um, awesome, awesome. Can't wait to get the battery in. Can't wait to hear it all roar and can't wait to get some shiny stuff on there because it's going to look amazing. So straight into it, uh, we're doing some quick wins here. Well, I thought they were going to be quick, but they need a bit of work. Um, so uh, the trimmers had uh, totally sealed these holes, so they needed some gentle teasing uh, and coaxing with a sharp Stanley. For goodness sake, don't, uh, don't slip into your paintwork. And over here, you can see that these holes are actually uh, uh, filled. So uh, they need some careful drilling. Luckily they're indented, so uh, I'm likely not to, not to slip. So we'll see how we get on there. Uh, these lights are looking uh, pretty good there. So uh, very pleased so far. So I thought I'd come around to the front of the car and we have got a headlight in. 
I uh, just had to just raise it up uh, just to drop the wheels ever so slightly to get my arm in there. I'm probably have, uh, going to have to take the wheels off just so I can uh, redo uh, any zip ties etc for the cables um, wires going to the headlights and the uh, indicators. So I will uh, tidy that, that up and you've got to keep all the uh, wires nicely tucked away. So they probably snipped this uh, at the paint shop just to get the wires out of the way so they could clean everything up and make sure there's not going to be any dust flying around etc. So uh, we'll redo that. So I just fitted the uh, splitter and now we get a chance to um, remove the protective covering and uh, and show what it's uh, show what it's actually like. And it looks uh, it's going to look amazing against this silver. So let me just uh, spend some time doing that carefully. And that does look amazing. It is always worth uh, just doubly take, taking your time uh, against any fresh paint. It's really liable to any scuffs and uh, scratches um, because it's still going off really. Uh, so uh, just take your time. I always make a point of uh, walking down the sides of the car with my back to it if I'm carrying any tools, just so I don't accidentally turn around or bang into anything. So um, I think we're all uh, looking good. So I'm gonna get uh, the rest of the lights on the front now. So now we're on to fitting the fuel cap. Now the fuel cap uh, does not sit flat on this uh, little cutout here. Um, and I don't want to start uh, having this fuel cap cut into the paint before the rest of it's um, rest of it's done up tight. So I'm actually going to mount this on a sheet of rubber. Uh, so I've just cut it out. I need to uh, do the holes. So I'm going to put this underneath and it's going to start biting into the rubber, which will just give a little bit and uh, allow everything else to be done up nice and tightly. Uh, because there's no way I want to take up that much uh, kind of slack and movement and uh, really be biting down into uh, into the rest of the paintwork. So uh, so we'll uh, take this out and fit the rubber. So we're looking at the scoop now. Now these are uh, uh, originally riveted in, I guess. Um, however, these days we just use uh, an M5 uh, hex. So um, this is probably uh, the most nerve-wracking job at the moment so uh, only three of these holes the bolts went straight through so I had to uh, gradually open up uh, the holes now I didn't touch the holes in the scoop in this top bit uh, I actually just did the holes underneath so uh, so as to allow the bolts just to slip through because I didn't want any undue pressures or anything else and I'm also uh, not doing them up that tight. Uh, I can just about uh, turn these uh, by hand. Um, they're, they're, they're tight enough not to wobble or uh, cause any other undue sort of uh, wear or anything. But uh, yeah, I'm certainly not going to be tightening them up. I might just give that one uh, just another quarter turn or so, uh, just so it can't quite turn by, uh, by hand. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty nervous about that. So obviously I don't want to drop anything. Uh, making sure nothing scratches and uh, keeping well away from the uh, the wing as well because um, you know I don't want to be rubbing up against uh, anything unnecessarily but uh, it's looking good so far and uh, it's all it uh, all looks pretty nice here we go then so still lots to do really need to get this windscreen out to fit the escutcheons and uh, drill some holes uh, need to get the dash out dash is pretty tight uh, they've taken the uh, padding from the front all the way around the top it's added a good another four or five mil so bear that in mind if you want to take a bit more off uh, before you send it to a trimmers um, however it's quite good because it does totally fill up the gap underneath the scuttle a uh, really good tip here uh, you will scratch your paintwork uh, trying to get this out because these studs will will catch somewhere when you're concentrating on one end they'll be catching on another another end so get yourself some of these uh thread sort of protector caps they're a sort of soft silicon uh so that's a really good idea or, or at least get some masking tape around the ends anyway so uh we're gonna get the dash out and see what's going on um they've certainly uh not rewired up uh everything either um so i was quite surprised to see not only did I not have a battery, but it wasn't going to start anyway because no wires were uh, connected to the barrel. So I'm going to have a good old poke around in there and see what uh, what they've been up to. 
All right, so there's a little bit of work uh, to do here. Uh, the guys haven't uh, bothered trimming the carpet around here, around the air vents. Uh, so we need to just uh, cut that off. Fairly simple. Um, the trim here goes over the bottom bolt for the windscreen. However, I can get my hand around there and uh, tentatively undo that. Hopefully it's the same on the other side. So, uh, two steps forward, one step back. All right, so a little update. Uh, so the back of the dash was a little bit of a mess. Quite a few connections were pulled out. Luckily I took some pictures beforehand uh, so we can put all them back in the right place. Just trimmed the carpet there, getting ready to put my air vents in. Um, haven't done the screen yet. Uh, I've only just managed to undo the uh, bottom bolts uh, and I'm not 100% sure I can get the bottom bolts back in, but uh, we'll, we'll work on it somehow, even if I have to pay a small child. Um, so that's all hopefully gonna be okay. I can just pull that out and put the escutcheons on, mark and drill, take it out. Uh, whilst I'm waiting for some help, um, I'll just put a few uh, bits on here. Um, yeah, just make sure when you're inserting anything, if you're having trouble inserting it, don't force it because you'll you'll probably come to realise you can't get it all the way in. And then when you pull it out, you'll probably pull a load of paint out or chip it or something else. So do make sure things just go into the holes nice and uh, nice and smoothly. So I just had to open up just one of these uh, uh, washer jet holes, just very slightly. A little bit of paint was just uh, on the inside. So that's uh, all fine and uh, obviously got the windscreen wipers in, but I haven't put the motor in yet, because I'm not putting the motor in until the windscreen's finally bolted in. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's a little update. So we're nearly there, uh, just a couple of points. I noticed when the uh, legs were in uh, initially, when it came back to me, it seemed to be pressing quite hard up against the corner here and, and on the other side, just, so I just uh, opened it up very slightly, um, just so there was no pressure on there, you know, go over a bump and for it to cause a crack or stress. Um, I don't know if it would, but you know, let's just relieve the tension. Uh, so I've made my holes now for the uh, escutcheon, so the windscreen's been in, out, in, out. Um, something I always do, I put a, a bit of bo um, car body paint in my holes because I have been told, I'm not sure if it's correct, that uh, you know dampness getting under a layer of paint can start making it lift. So I just like to make a, se a seal in there uh, and any other holes I, 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 I come to, I always just uh, put some body paint in there just to seal it all up. Um, because certainly if you're going through any, uh, uh, any rain, it's fairly driven down here. So another good tip is once everything's installed, you need to get some silicon sealant and uh, big old dollops all around inside. Um, push it right up into your screws and bolts and up around the leg just to stop uh, any dribbles of water going down there because it will actually soak your car. So that's all good. Um, so I've made my holes slightly uh, uh, larger because uh, one bolt was fairly tense and tight. Uh, so that's going to drop in nicely now and uh, just put my vents in. Now normally you would have to put these in now because you probably can't get a, a screwdriver uh, working with you uh, against the rake of the windscreen. However, because the soft top's been fitted, we've changed out our uh, slotted screws to these. Are they called Tenax, Tenant? Not sure, but whatever they are, uh, you can just hold them with a, um, uh, a spanner on top and do up the nut underneath. So actually uh, a lot more simple, but I'll just put those on anyway. Uh, just so we have to mess about slightly less. So we're going to get the windscreen now and uh, and put it in and hopefully I can do up those leg bolts uh, behind all the trim there. Okay, the last bit of the windscreen, uh, after I got the bolts for the legs in finally behind all the trim, uh, we're doing this up now. So I've got my special uh, cut down Allen key and uh, we can just do this up. Uh, from underneath, which is handy. Plenty of masking tape. You cannot be too careful. Something will slip. Just my hand resting on here uh, and scuffing backwards and forwards will scratch. So, um, so yeah, protect your uh, investment here. Gonna, I'm not going to kill it, 
Let's just uh, get snug in a little bit more. That is pretty, pretty good. Let's just uh, do that so it doesn't move. A turn, make sure they're not, not wobbling. That is going to do it. I never like to dig anything into the paintwork if I can help it, and uh, even even the escutcheons that, uh, oh, sorry about that even the escutcheons. I just up turned this front corner just ever so slightly, about three mil, because otherwise it's it's going to dig in. And looking at that for the rest of its life is really going to bug me. Uh, so it's now just nicely on top of the paintwork. Okay, so I seem to have jumped on a little bit, uh, mainly because I've totally forgot to film as I've been a little bit tense. You know, it's always a bit, uh, bit of a worry working around a freshly painted car. But anyway, um, I've got a seat in. Uh, this is a seat for our uh, IVA and I'd highly recommend uh, uh, having such a seat with a built-in headrest etc i think uh it's really good and they're quite comfy um so basically um four bolts uh, underneath the um seat bottom there straight through and you need to be showing uh you need to have a, a large washer underneath the car and at least one uh whole ring of thread showing um that was brought to my attention uh, at a recent iva so <clears throat> make sure you've uh, got nylocks on there and one bit of thread and a good 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 big washer to uh, to spread the load etc and i would suggest uh, a large washer on the seat uh, side as well so that's all going uh, quite well we've got um the harness in there uh going into uh, nice harness bolts there uh, which i think uh 12.8 or possibly the next one up i think then the next one up i can't remember what uh, rating that is though <clears throat> uh, next up uh this was the next battle so um a couple of holes had been uh, filled in by the uh by the body shop so i just had to tentatively open those out now i um personally opt for slightly hot larger holes than the actual uh screws so that they can just uh, just um drop through uh, let's see if i can well, you can see that this is uh, this is wobbly. Uh, so they just drop through. So I'm not screwing uh, straight into the paintwork. I'm going straight through into a flat kind of spring uh, nut, if you like, on the other side, just so I can have that kind of movement, uh, just in case um, my holes are just very slightly bigger than the uh, screws going in. And uh, you can just have a little bit of movement, uh, which really helps when inserting the, uh, the roll bars. Uh, something else that's happened uh, here was um, that uh, the roll bar uh, uh, over time seemed to have just closed slightly. Uh, the kind of legs had closed slightly. So I think it's meant to be about nine and a, nine and a quarter, 19 and a quarter, nine and a quarter inches, something. Uh, and it wasn't at the bottom, it was only nine. Um, so that needed careful spreading out. Uh, now I didn't want to go in there uh, with any tension through the holes it was going to rest against the paintwork it would, it would have chipped god knows what what it would have done so i actually tentatively used um one of these uh tools here uh a trigger clamp if, if you like so i had that um uh up here and i squeezed it so it just spread the legs slightly and uh it allowed me just to drop really nicely through the holes um, and then it's held in place by the uh, brackets, obviously in the boot, etc., and the wheel well. Uh, this top part uh, had held its, um, you know, its uh, its dimension. So there's now no pressure uh, uh, on the holes, etc. Now it's through. It was just uh, just on the tails that just start, slightly started bowing in a little bit. So I had three of us on that. I wasn't risking anything. Um, just re really, basically, to to catch the clamp in case it uh, in case it slid off but um, just a little bit spreading, uh, it then just dropped through. And now, um, and now I've got a bit of movement in there. It's not hard up against the paintwork and I'm really quite chuffed with that. So we'll have to do the other side in a mo. Uh, I've moved on to the exhaust here, just putting on the driver's side. Um, no real dramas, obviously goes in and out uh, and slides on just fine. Um, however, 
<clears throat> you may find it more difficult once you've secured the uh, escutcheon because that can uh, certainly limit uh, the amount of movement you have uh, left and right, etc. So it might be worth uh, while putting the escutcheon on uh, after. So, you know, you can fit the exhaust with the escutcheon just hanging here and then put it up here, mark the holes, etc. It looks like you can get to everything uh, and even my hand uh, rivet gun could get into everything uh, just fine. Um, I did actually myself I did actually uh, fit the top two rivets first because I thought there might be limited access uh, and then I did find it a little difficult to put the exhaust on which is why I'm mentioning it but um, it wasn't too bad and then I've just uh, done the bottom two just now so all looking good. Now I'm not going to feature these shark fins too heavily here because I've uh, done a full sort of video in series one I believe um, but basically I've set myself up with a stall and my phone got some spacers here uh, some wedge shaped spacers and um, basically what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be loading up uh, some P38 uh, on each of the wooden battens that I've attached uh, which I'll show you in a sec and I will just be uh, holding this um, basically for the full sort of 15-20 minutes. I'll use some spaces so I don't have to worry about up and down etc. Uh, I just want to give a little bit of tension just pulling it out and keeping the battens against the body. So do mask this up. Uh, these things are deadly sharp and uh, they'll, they'll strip your paint uh, really quickly. So you can see that uh, I've got some battens attached here as per the instructions. Now um, Interestingly, do not use MDF because these will get damp and they will fall apart and it'll be a whole world of hurt. Of course, you can PVA them, I guess, to uh, to protect uh, against that. Anyway, these are oak, um, so I'm just going to rough these up a little bit. Um, I'll probably stick a bit of PVA around the top and back uh, just to add a bit of protection. But uh, we'll be loading up P38 onto each of these battens, tentatively uh, lowering in, into the slot and then getting it sort of horizontal uh, vertical and uh, raising it up and then pulling it back uh, back against the bodywork so that's the idea uh, just held in by by wood screws um, it's uh, it's uh, pretty simple but um, you know they're really effective once they're installed and that's it all right so I'm just going to catch you up on a few things here so um, I'm putting in uh, these screws uh, this screw here on the inside actually goes down to probably where your power cable and uh, rear leg uh, wiring uh, goes down uh, and the screw will be too long. So I'm going to cut mine short and just put a tiny little bit of tiger seal on the end uh, just to keep it in there. Uh, just to stop it wobbling around as uh, everything else is holding it tight. So do, doing that, um, your roll bars, uh, you do need to put um, your nylocks on the bottom of the uh, harness bars, I mean. Um, so uh, although you may think that they're threaded through the, uh, the sort of chassis, you, you do need to put these uh, nylocks uh, uh, underneath. Um, so just a bit of tiger seal round and uh, adjusted my brake so it's well scuffing so that we get a good handbrake reading. Uh, I don't want that too loose at all. Of course, it's got the bed in a, a little bit as well, so I did it up, yeah, just so I can get a bar across here and just about turn, uh, turn, the, turn the hub. Well, I'll put a seven hour day in today. Uh, pretty knackered, going through lots of stuff. Um, surprisingly, a lot of uh, things need looking at after it's uh, been away for a while and been through several hands. Um, so it's dark outside now. Uh, let me show you what I've uh, been doing. Um, so uh, I've got some uh, some air ducts in there. Um, just putting on the uh, the cowling and uh, getting ready to put on the steering wheel and hook up the horn, etc. Um, got one seat fixed. Uh, need to just to drop the other seat in. The holes are done. Um, so I've done my my water jets. So just to soften to the ends in some boiling hot water and they just push on really easily. Uh, Readjusted my uh, locks and I will just mask all this area off and uh, just spray them black because uh, they got a few scratches because they weren't the right height. So I've now got them locking nicely and this is just a little bit sprung which is nice so it holds it all down firmly. Um, so not too much in there. Um, so uh, they had, the trimmers or the painters had uh, cut some of the zip ties 
So I've zip tied back up, but I'm gonna revisit that and I haven't got the indicators in yet because we're waiting for the IVA indicators. Um, so that's all good. Um, so uh, exhausts and shark fins kind of all right. I uh, had my daughter in the boot to help me with the um, flat um, nuts on the other side of here because I couldn't get my arm uh, all the way up to the extremes. So that's all done. Um, uh, my lights are all in uh, from earlier, but what I did do, you're not going to see very well, uh, they had a short bit of dangling wire. In fact, you can't see it at all. Um, but I just put a little P-clip up there just to... Um, just to hold the wire so it wasn't flapping around, just so no one can say that's gonna wear over time. Um, so pretty pleased with all that. So uh, what's happening now? Um, okay, so I am getting the grills ready for uh, these openings here. So I just uh, sprayed them and I'm waiting for them to go off. So I've left the wheels uh, off uh, so I can fit them with uh, Tiger Seal. And then I'll be dropping it down and putting the dash in and taking it for a, a quick jaunt up and down the road, um, ready for IVA in about a week or so. Uh, I've got to wait for the IVA kit from AK. Um, they just uh, have a few uh, trims that go on the shark fins uh, and a few other bits and pieces. Indicators have a coloured bottom half so we get the right indicator height. And uh, that's it. So I think we'll call it a day there. All right, so we've got a little update uh, after just ironing out some of these kinks. Um, a lot of them seem to have been uh, caused, not purposely, uh, by, the, by the trimmers. Because when you send the dashboard up there, they remove all the wiring. And of course, uh, I don't know what records they keep or pictures they take, but a couple of the connections were in, in the wrong place. So I wasn't getting any side lights or dash lights. However, I uh, managed to get all them working. Um, so uh, what else have I been doing? Um, uh, the brakes were not really engaging that much. So I've just adjusted those and wound those out a little. Uh, so that needs a little bit more testing. I wasn't getting a brake light uh, over on the uh, near side. Uh, and that actually was just a blown, uh, blown bulb. So that was a result. Uh, everything else is pretty cool. Um, I don't think I've got any other issues at the moment. Uh, all my other lights work, fog lights and everything else. My brake light comes on, my, and my brake warning light comes on when I engage the brake, which is great. Um, I don't think my start button lights up uh, when I turn the lights on. So that's a simple fix just to uh, plug that into the illumination kind of uh, loom and uh, and earth it. So uh, I'm gonna gonna have a look at that. Um, my f I did take it for a successful drive um, up and down the close, and I, once I got onto the driveway, it then stopped, and I didn't know why. Anyway, I've realised uh, a fuse was blown, and that's a 10 amp fuse uh, that makes the fuel pump work. Now I do believe uh, that actually does need to be upgraded to a 15 or a 20 or something. So I've sent an email to AK just to inquire about that. But I think I remember doing that in my previous car. Um, what else is going on? Everything is fairly cooking on gas and my fluid stayed good. I just topped up the, um, because we drove a little bit, so I guess that just took a little bit of the uh, power steering fluid. So I just topped that up a little bit. Um, uh, got all my tabs working now for the bonnet uh, catches, so that's all nice. Uh, I did have a fuel leak actually, uh, so that was in the top, um, my top union up here. Uh, so that has uh, basically I put a, a, a Mikkel or clamp on there actually, but it didn't do up tight enough, so I just needed the next size down. So I've just whacked another one on and then another one just for good measure. Anyway, uh, we are now dry as a bone, so that's all groovy. Um, uh, just double check before putting the wipers on. I did double check they rotated the correct way and nothing got messed up. Um, and uh, and uh, they did rotate, so um, I put the wipers on because you didn't want them going in reverse and scratching up the paint or anything. I uh, got my rear view mirror on, uh, which is suitable for IVA. 
it's not the best uh, solution up there because it does vibrate like crazy. Um, but of course, we've got a, a dash mounted one to fit anyway. So that's it for now. Well, it's getting pretty real now. Uh, it's minus, uh, minus one. It's been a long old day. So dark again outside. Um, been working flat out. Come across quite a few issues from uh, trimmers or wherever it's uh, this car has been previously um, not blaming the trimmers however I think next time I'm going to remove uh, the whole of the wiring loom from behind uh, the dash just leaving the dials and switches for them to fit the leather correctly and then when it comes back to me I can install all the wiring uh, uh, in the correct place and no terminals will come off or go missing um, so that's been quite interesting. Uh, one of the issues was uh, the uh, brake light, whenever you put the ha electric handbrake on and off, would only work with the side light uh, turned on, uh, which is obviously not good. Um, so I've rewired that and that works perfectly whether the lights are on or off. Um, so we're all good. Uh, Speedo was also not working. I programmed it uh, correctly. Um, but no joy, so I had to go back under the car and just make sure that the pulse wire was connected correctly and also the earth, and it was the earth that was an issue somehow, although I had done it up beautifully with a terminal and lots of uh, heat shrink and all the other good stuff. Anyway, no matter. We are nearly ready for IVA, hopefully. Uh, we've got uh, some nice wing mirrors on. I really like these wing mirrors. Uh, personally, I would keep them. Uh, I think they're great and they add, uh, add to the whole look. It's a bit more, uh, bit more bling, which is always nice. Um, uh, what else have we done? Uh, so we've got um, uh, the IVA friendly uh, indicators on, which have the bottom bit uh, blacked out. Uh, so uh, there might still need to be some adjustment with the suspension. So I need to lower it to the floor and check the distance is correct between uh, the, the, the black line here and, and the floor to make sure that we're above uh, the limits for the uh, indicator height because um, it can, can be a little bit low. And all we have to do is just wind uh, the suspension around a bit uh, to, uh, to uh, raise the car up a little bit. So that's all fine. Um, and then we have a, uh, we don't necessarily need this uh, IVA uh, 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 cap, but um, uh, because we can get away with our actual cap by putting a little rubber end on the catch. Um, but uh, this, this is handy and it saves messing around, saves you losing the little rubber bit, so that's all good. So the next thing we're doing is putting on our uh, high level, uh, our, our brake, my number plate, plate light and we have to just raise it up a bit to show that we've got enough distance to fit a standard number plates just here. So that's all fine uh, and actually I really like this. Uh, if I could make this and give it a little spray of whatever body colour I wanted I think this is good and it lets you have a full size number plate. Uh, so we just need to um, uh, solder the terminals on here uh, so that they can go into their little homes here so I've got a soldering iron all set up and then that'll be nice um, what else am I doing uh, obviously we've got uh, reflectors on the back um, I'm pretty confident with my uh, fog and reverse lights that they will pass however I've got some thick solid sort of neoprene rubber that I can stick to the bottom of this and I'm going to shape it slightly just so there's a nice curve underneath there uh, so that there's no issues there with the bottom radius but I'm not actually sure if they um, if they're too concerned about that uh, we've got a nice uh, cover on here uh, horn still works underneath so that's all fine just to get rid of any sharp edges and uh, finally um, we've got some uh, end cut out uh, end uh, covers here just so that uh, we can cover up possibly uh, any sh any sharp edges um, that might be showing on those shark fins um, I've uh, re-bled the brakes to make sure they're all sharp and all good um, 
I've adjusted the toe in. Uh, I think you need about four degrees total, so two on each, two degrees each side toe in, and that means that when you uh, come out of a turn, <coughs> or it, it attempts to sort of straighten up itself. Um, so that's uh, worth doing. So apart from that, um, I think we're all uh, cooking on gas. Um, got these uh, caps here to go over the locks because otherwise that's a that's a that's a flat surface otherwise and that's not a nice radius with these caps on uh, it's a nice radius and I think they look uh, spot on as well so uh, sorry about that uh, so they might be worth keeping on as well um, got the uh, the plate in there with the engine number and uh, chassis number etc so that's uh, also something that has to be done I think it has to be not removable so it can't just be kind of velcroed on or anything so we've got four little uh rivets in there and that's all good so um so yeah i'm uh, pretty much raring to go after the late night last night uh, it's a new day feeling much better about things uh let's just go over what i've been checking before uh, my iva uh, so first of all i've just checked all the uh, height requirements for the indicators and reflectors uh dead uh, dead easy on the back that's all well within even the fog light and reverse light in actual fact my previous uh, iva inspector got his size 11s up here and as long as the, his toe was nowhere close then that was an e easy pass if it was getting close then he'd get his tape measure out so uh so that's good enough for me now the front indicators need to be uh 30 five centimeters from the ground so uh we are okay i did wind up the suspension during the build and um we're on about uh, uh 36 almost 36 centimeters here before the black line and uh, just a couple of mil less uh for this side so i'm well within uh the expected tolerances there just checked my washer jets and uh, they are just about getting a splash onto the windscreen and uh, getting it clean, so I'm okay there. Uh, left that a little bit late to test, but uh, we just realized and filled it up with washer fluid. Um, so that is it really. I'm pretty, pretty, uh, pretty happy. Obviously it's a bit daunting. Uh, my test center is in Yedin. Uh, I have to jump onto the M3, M25, get off at Heathrow, get onto a back road or I could do a back road the whole way, but obviously that's an awful lot more driving and gear changes. I'd rather just hunker down and stick in the slow, uh, uh, the slow lane and, um, and just go uh, on a couple of straight roads. So, uh, so that's it. All right then, so that's it until IVA day, which is tomorrow. Uh, I'll be getting dressed up into my salopettes and ski jacket because it's going to be darn cold at half four, five o'clock in the morning. Um, a little bit nervous, obviously. Uh, just driving it there is uh, always a bit uh, nerve wracking, but uh, should all be good. I've built this car well and uh, just hoping that uh, it all passes. I've hopefully uh, built it in a safe manner and uh, hopefully the, uh, the biting point of the... Um, you know the brakes and the emissions all play ball and uh, and we get a pass so uh, I'll see you again